What's up guys? This is Manoj Paprani. I welcome you all on behalf of the ADPedia world. So, I hope you have already revised the complete syllabus uh, which has already been covered by us through ADPedia world. This is going to be the second last topic in which I'm going to discuss with you about each and everything relating to portfolio management. This is going to be the second last topic guys post this particular portfolio management entire chapter will be only and only left with mergers and acquisitions that's it and after that you are done with your syllabus and we'll wait for you to tell us your results as and when this may attempt will come in so we'll mark the beginning of this particular presentation in which i'm going to discuss with you the relevant topics relating to portfolio management this is going to be the first video presentation for it are you guys up for it wonderful fasten up your seat belts we're about to take off with the first topic of the day and that will be portfolio management so guys what do i mean by portfolio management that should be the first thing that should come to your mind once we decide on to taking care of the chapter with the name of portfolio management obviously so guys portfolio management is basically a art and science of what art and particularly a science of making decisions about investment mix and policy matching to your objectives you need to do the asset allocation for individual or different institution and thereby you need to just adjust your investments balancing the risk against it performance that's it that's a very basic thing which revolves entirely towards the concepts of portfolio management so all you need to do in portfolio management is you need to decide on to which securities you need to invest in number one thing number two you need to think about in what percentages you need to invest number three you need to take care of what you need to take care of your returns what amount of returns should you expect to receive once you have entered into a particular securities involvement and taking care of risk remember guys we can't go ahead with the returns unless we take the adequate amount of risk doing your c final examination okay or attempting a c final okay is in itself providing you superb returns okay there is a very good possibility that once you'll become a ca you'll get n number of returns okay that will be like way too high for you but for that, you'll have to take up the risk. And what's that risk? You need to take up that risk of attempting the CA final. Only and only if in case you'll be attempting your CA final, only post attempting, you'll be able to call yourself a chartered accountant once you are qualified. Simple guys. So that goes with everything in your day to day life. And that goes ahead with the stock market as well. Portfolio management is nothing but a basic art and it's a science wherein you take up a decision decision of what decision about the investment that what kind of investments you should make in what mix okay should i go ahead with the equity part or should i go ahead while investing in debt securities or should i go ahead with hybrid form all these things you need to draft your policy accordingly according to your objectives okay i'll tell you about what different objectives are but for that matter you need to understand the broader picture of portfolio management so you draft your own objectives okay but my objective is to attain higher returns okay for that matter you'll have to take higher risk if in case your objective is moderate returns cool go ahead with moderate returns but at the same time you'll have to bear that moderate risk and accordingly you'll have to allocate your asset that is your money into different individual securities or investments and then you need to just balance it out with the risk against its performance how simple is that right clear guys this is what portfolio management is all about and that's what we are going to understand in totality with this particular chapter are we guys thorough with portfolio management's definition good guys wonderful let's go ahead with the objectives part what all are the objectives of portfolio management number one and the basic thing 
that you need to ensure your safety and security of the principal amount that you have invested. Supposedly, you are having 1 lakh rupees in your hand. You just go to a, a let's say, mutual fund. Okay, and you tell them about your objectives that I want to invest in a particular mutual fund, taking upon your age and uh, the risk that you can bear. Okay, if you are a very young individual who is high on uh, that adrenaline rush and you need to attain good amount of returns, you'll be able to bear good amount of risk as well. But if in case you are a very uh, aged senior citizen, okay, so certainly you'll have that uh, safety scenario in your mind and you'll go ahead with those securities that give you, uh, let's say, very stable kind of returns, okay, a fixed return, a fixed interest, a fixed dividend, so that you can take care of your life really well. So that depends upon your objectives. So the number one objective of portfolio management is that you need to ensure that the amount that you have invested, that is your principal amount, it should remain safe and secure. Where is that uh, thing that you, you can get the guarantee that your amount that you have invested, okay, that will remain safe and secure. Number one, you keep it in your bank, saving bank interest, you get simple, cool. Apart from that, okay, this is one thing which you can do. Just keep that money in your bank account and get the saving bank interest. Simple. Secondly, you can invest that amount in your equity market. There also your money is safe. Okay. But only and only if in case you are investing in some secure market. Let's say you are investing in debentures. You are investing in bonds of high credit worthy companies. Okay. And you are sure about this thing that your principal is not gonna be going uh, like washing away okay the company is definitely not into a position wherein that going concern assumption is going going to be hit badly no so the company is stable enough and the company is definitely not going to be liquidated very soon so what's going to happen to your money your money is absolutely safe okay you don't need to worry about it so number one thing of portfolio management is that principle that you need to keep in your mind that your amount which you have invested into the market your principal amount it should remain safe and secure that should be the first objective of portfolio management number two comes in attaining the capital growth on investments by investing in growth securities obviously everybody wants to grow in this particular environment we have got life we need to grow we need to go ahead in our life okay whatever has been with us yesterday we just need to go ahead and embark a very new beginning okay taking care of our complete potential and we just need to grow simple so same goes with the objective of portfolio management as well we need to attain a capital growth on our investments obviously if today i am investing 1 lakh rupees in the market i need to ensure that my capital also grows as the market grows completely simple market is growing nifty is growing sensex is growing so does my investments as well so attaining the capital growth on my investments by investing in growth securities those securities who have really got the good potential of growing rapidly into the coming next five years down the line or maybe 10 years down the line that should be my second goal after my safety and security of the principal amount number three is ensuring that i do have some investments in liquid securities obviously you never know when do mr narendra modi comes up with another demonetization concept and they'll say sorry dude you can't go ahead with your liquid money you just need to wait for the banks so what do we need to do in that particular situation are we going to wait for our prime minister to take up the next declaration so that we can go ahead with uh, some something new and something innovative no so what do we need to do we need to ensure that we are investing in some liquid securities okay liquid securities are definitely something which is gonna be like helping you up in such adverse conditions wherein you badly want your money okay and you need to uh, take that money out although that will also come via route of banks only again you'll you'll be under that scanner of mr modi so you can't help it about you can can't help much about it but still you need to ensure jokes apart you need to ensure that uh, investment in liquid securities is a must okay invest in some good liquid securities maybe your uh, commercial papers or some different instruments wherein you can get the money easily maybe uh, within the span of 90 days 120 days or some good securities wherein 
you'll be able to get your money very rapidly whenever you require it number four the main thing the major thing as to why portfolio management is definitely necessary okay and guys this is the most talked about factor okay the first factor the second factor and the third factor which we talked these are something which is really imperative but the most talked about factor and objective of portfolio management is diversification diversification is the core talked about factor regarding the word portfolio management diversification of investment by investing in various securities and various sectors that is something which is very important have you heard about this thing uh, you must have been like hearing this listening to this particular phrase for like n number of years and which is do not do not put all your eggs in one basket this is something which is very commonly being heard from um, from the complete family from people around they always tell you don't keep all your eggs in one basket have you ever thought about this thing that this principle which is regularly being used in your day to day household life will be like applied to such a finance uh, kind of domain as well which is known as portfolio management yeah guys portfolio management basically goes ahead and revolves around this particular thing which is called as do not put all your eggs in one basket by this particular phrase we simply mean that do not invest your entire money in one security guys you never know what's going to happen to that particular company in the next few weeks let alone a few weeks uh, there might be a very uh, sudden mishap about to occur to that particular company in the next 5 days okay so what's going to happen to your particular investment you have invested 2 lakh rupees in one particular share and that share flunks badly like anything okay so what's going to happen to you and your position you will be like uh, getting n number of losses you will have to bear them up okay you will be incurring all those losses okay at one go so what's going to happen in that particular situation the only good thing which is going to be like saving you from seeing those adverse situations is you need to go ahead with the principle which is called as diversification so do not put all your money into one particular security again do not put all your eggs in one particular basket so you need to diversify your money okay into diversified securities you have got 2 lakh rupees in your pocket go ahead with some pharma sector one security invest some amount in it go ahead with aerospace invest some amount in that particular security go ahead again with fmcg company invest some amount in hindustan unilever go ahead with aviation industry invest some amount of money in indigo or spicejet or jet airways as the case may be so this is something which is really imperative for you to understand that diversification is the mool mantra of portfolio management so you need to diversify your investments by investing in various securities and various sectors that was all about the major objectives of portfolio management and i'm sure about this thing that you guys must have got a very fair idea about all these four major objectives are we guys thorough with it wonderful guys let's go ahead with the next topic and which is risks what all are the risks which are involved in portfolio management number 1 purchasing power risk number 2 interest rate risk number 3 business risk number 4 market risk number 5 exchange rate risk number 6 regulatory risk and lastly number 7 political risk let's understand each of these series one by one let's go ahead with the first one which is the purchasing power risk what do i mean by purchasing power risk guys purchasing power is something which is directly related to one thing in any of the economy and that one thing is inflation simple guys market uh, prices are uh, prices in the market as going really high okay so inflation is going rapidly at a very high pace okay it's increasing like anything so what's going to happen to your purchasing power absolutely your purchasing power is going to be like hitting a rock bottom because the prices and the inflation is rapidly increasing so your purchasing power will definitely decrease in that particular scenario what amount of the quantity of tomatoes you were purchasing yesterday the same will be like acquired by you after a year at a very uh, in a very small quantity if in case the inflation has rapidly increased in the next one year 
So in case you have invested your money in, into a particular security and the inflation parameters if I talk about. So whatever the kind of returns that you are receiving from that particular security. If inflation is also going ahead rapidly and you don't expect your returns to be much in that forthcoming year to come in. So you have got this purchasing power risk that whatever kind of return that you'll be receiving from the market in the next one year that cannot be compensated against the heftiness of the inflation which will be revolving in that particular economy. So you won't be able to again purchase something of that particular value again in the forthcoming years to come at the same value. So you are definitely under that scanner of purchasing power risk and that is what this risk is all about. Next thing comes in your interest rate risk. What do I mean by interest rate risk? There is a very good possibility that tomorrow or maybe six months down the line or maybe a year down the line, the interest rate in the market will go high. Again, yes, there is a very uh, good chances that there will be a rise in the level of interest rate. So what's going to happen is that will depress your prices of fixed income securities. Let's suppose you have got, uh, let's say, Bajaj Fincorp. Okay, uh, you have got the uh, debentures or maybe bonds for Bajaj Fincorp. Okay, and you have paid, uh, let's say, one lakh rupees for it. Okay, now they are providing you a return of, let's say, six percent. Okay, six percent is the return that they are paying you up. But at the same time, now the interest rate has really gone up in the market. Monetary policy and RBI's different policy uh, due to those factors, the interest rates have completely rise okay they have risen to a very good level and now the interest which market is expecting for getting that loan or anything maybe the interest rate for that particular market overall goes up till let's say 12 percent or maybe 13 percent now even if you are getting five percent or maybe six percent or maybe eight percent from Bajaj Fincorp as your return still that won't be able to uh, go ahead and uh, like compensate your position with the interest rate in the market okay and that will depress what the price of that Bajaj Fincorp security because they are not uh, able to provide you the better returns okay the the returns are really under underpaid for that matter and definitely it's gonna be uh, making Bajaj Fincorp uh, landing up in the situation wherein the security will be called as overpriced okay people won't go ahead with that security because they are not able to uh, offset the interest rates which are prevailing in the market so what's gonna happen to Bajaj Fincorp is their prices will go down and that's what will happen to them and frequently on a very supposedly note that thing will happen to equity market as well and this was all about interest rate risk next thing comes in business risk business risk involves n number of things okay there is a change in technology or maybe the change in uh, supply of material or their uh, change of uh, uh, some good competitor coming into the market a number of things okay whatever is happening into the market as something which is going to be like directly or indirectly affecting your business that is something which will be called as business risk next comes in market risk so the very general risk which is each one of us uh, say this thing that the equity market is very uh, volatile okay we all know that okay there is a high amount of volatility that is uh, going on in the market okay there are fluctuations in the stock market which we witness each day so Market risk is nothing but that general risk which is associated with that fluctuation which is going ahead in the stock market. So when stock market declines and the stock loses the value, okay, obviously stock market is declining overall so stock also loses its value and that uh, that risk of losing of the value because of the market conditions overall is market risk. Next thing is exchange rate risk. Again, a very good example. Let's suppose uh, any of the company which in which you have invested your money that company is not available in India okay you have invested your amount with any of the company who are, who are basically established and uh, based out in abroad okay so now that particular return which you'll be getting from that uh, company that is exposed to another risk apart from the four risks which we just mentioned and that final risk is exchange rate risk because whatever the amount that you'll be receiving from that company as your interest or maybe your dividend income that you can exchange uh, in our currency only after going through the exchange rates so if in case your currency is going down during that particular time then it's good for you okay because you'll be getting your dollars in that particular currency get it exchanged in your currency and get some good amount of money but if in case your currency is going really up 
so no uh, basically i uh, forgot i just uh, mistakenly told you the opposite side so if in case your currency is going really well if in case you are getting hundred dollars from market as your interest or income uh, so just convert it to 65 in today's rate you'll get uh, 6500 in your pocket but if in case let's suppose your currency is really weak enough against that foreign currency and supposedly the interest rate in going into the market today is just 60 so you'll be getting only 6000 in your pocket so exchange rate, rate rate risk is something which is imperative for all those securities wherein you have invested your money outside india so exchange rate risk is another risk next comes in regulatory risk what do i mean by regulatory risk again this is the risk of like unanticipated kind of change which is going ahead with the regulation factors let's suppose there is a change big change in the taxation policy so what's going to happen this is a example for regulatory risk there is a change in your regulations okay which is very unanticipated you didn't expect it to happen but then yes there is a change in taxation policy we all hear the budgets every time every now and then so mr uh, arun jaitley comes up with another uh, finance uh, regulation and you say yes now what's going to happen to our securities this is something which is uh, be like included into the risk of regulatory risk and finally comes in the political risk so this is again which is unanticipated change in investment environment okay due to change in political parties let's say there was congress back then before modi arena came in okay so they did something good okay let's say uh modi government came in they did something they again thought about something doing they th again thought about doing something and then they again tried doing something again good so what's gonna happen is there was a risk back then as well because they were trying to do something good and now modi arena is also trying to do something good so again there is a political risk over here as well because both of them are trying their level best to do something good don't go ahead with that okay something bad was happening during that particular time so now it has just changed okay modi arena has come in we really love our prime minister no offense to them they are really doing some very good efforts okay everything back then has just changed and definitely i just hope my country prospers like anything that is your country as well by the way so this is something which is revolving around to the situation of political risk okay so these are the seven major risks which are involved in portfolio management purchasing power risk investment related interest rate risk then there is business risk market risk exchange rate risk regulatory risk and finally political risk i hope you guys are clear thoroughly with each one of them wonderful guys let's go ahead with the next topic and which is relating to the factors which are affecting the investment decisions in portfolio management so what all are those factors which are going to change or affect your investment decision in portfolio management number one is objectives remember guys i just quoted you one example if in case you are a very young individual okay you will be having that interline rush of uh winning this entire world okay you'll be like i just go i just want to go ahead and win this world okay so what's going to happen is you will ask someone how to win this world they'll say okay just go ahead into the market and just invest your entire money in equity okay so what's going to happen to you is you'll be like investing your entire money in equity in that uh, aspiration in your mind which is you need to earn higher returns so you'll be like yes i do want to earn higher returns and then he'll say do 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 just wait i wanted to tell you this thing that in case you are expecting your higher returns you need to go ahead with higher risk as well and you'll say dude i'm still a young fellow yes i can bear that particular amount of risk as well so your objective is earning higher return and for that particular thing you are capable and able to bear that higher risk now let's go ahead with another individual who is let's say 65 year old aged man and he'll be like i just want a basic stable life okay because they have already completed their life now their objective is very much simple that they need to have that stable income in order to sustain their lives okay their life and their wife or maybe children's life okay so they basically need to have that simple stable life so what they'll require is they'll basically say i don't want to invest in equity kindly invest my money in debt securities debt securities will help me achieve that regular sustained income in my pocket in the form of interest and i'm cool and happy with it so 
two individuals one thing which is portfolio management and two different objectives clear guys super wonderful number one number two is selection of investment now on the basis of your objective you need to have your selection of investment again simple stuff young fellow will go ahead for the equity market more of equity market because he's capable enough to take that risk because he has got good amount of life that senior citizen is gonna be going ahead with the debt securities because they want some stable income in your pocket simple so on the basis of that particular objective you will go ahead and select your investment one will follow equity another one will follow debt next comes in is overvaluation and undervaluation of security so guys i made you understand this particular topic which is known as intrinsic value in my equity chapter wherein uh, this thing has been like completed really back then so even in case you have missed out uh, hearing me up on that particular topic just scroll down to my videos you will get equity analysis and valuation topics so therein i have talked uh, like at a stretch about this topic of overvaluation and undervaluation of security so again i'll reiterate my point so the very uh, fact that whether a security would be like overvalued or let's say undervalued for investment is a very key factor in your decision making you may uh, refer to many of the tools like let's say fundamental analysis technical analysis all these analysis are really helpful for any of the portfolio management to assess whether the intrinsic value of the company is uh, really the same uh, that is available as the market value of that company or not using the industry analysis company analysis and then financial analysis check out on the uh, let's say quality of the management who all are the board of directors who all on the board's panel so all these things are really imperative for you to choose uh, wherein you need to invest your money in so overvaluation and undervaluation of security is another factor which is going to affect your investment decision in portfolio management and lastly timing so in cricket and in stock market in both the places timing is something which is extremely important one shot you missed out your clean bowl again one shot one timing you missed out you are clean bowl with the losses so timing on investment is really imperative in the portfolio management as well so you need to tap in the time wherein you need to really purchase and you need to tap in where we need to uh, just go ahead with the selling part okay so genius is someone who knows when to quit it is said so again this thing happens in stock market as well it is a very key decision that affects your investment decisions to a very large extent and that's what it's being told up so these are the factors which are going to affect your investment decision in the portfolio management are you guys clear and thorough with it wonderful let's go ahead with the last topic of the day and that will be relating to strategies and portfolio management there are primarily two strategies okay one there is a person who's really active and they'll be following the active strategy and then there is a person who's really passive okay i don't care much about uh, the things which are going into the market okay i am just concerned about one thing which is i just need to hold on on to my securities and i am happy sleeping around that is something which is being followed by passive strategy makers so number one is active strategy this is going to be involving one thing which is outperforming the market with superior returns anyone who is following this active strategy will obviously and obviously try to outperform the market the first goal that comes in the mind is i am just going to outperform the market and i am going to be the one who will be landing up in a position of earning the superior returns that is something every active strategic investor thinks about they just want to outperform the market with their superior returns because they are thinking that yes i am investing my entire time into the capital market so i just need to outperform the market at least i am going ahead with some big guns so definitely i'll i'll get some good returns next thing which active strategy involves is selecting the undervalued securities these persons are like having or basically they are investing their entire amount of time money and effort in tapping out on the market okay so they really go ahead with deeper research and they they plug out okay those securities which are really undervalued in the market and then they invest in that particular security and then magic happens the securities really comes up with some good returns and these guys become millionaire billionaire anything okay next comes in the the changing of the asset mix frequently they are the ones who are really active okay so they knew one thing that 
when to exit and when to enter into market so they really enter and exit the market on a very frequent basis with respect to one particular security they just enter into one particular security they just exit from that and they constantly change the active asset mix frequently next they are really uh, aggressive purchase and uh, uh, sale maker of the securities okay they do it really well and they do it really aggressively okay because they are uh, following the active strategy and finally they are the ones who are really involved into speculation and short term trading these are basically day in day out traders guys because almost trillions amount of amount is regularly invested in your equity market so these are really big players okay there are n number of them many of my friends are doing it for like intraday basis and they are earning huge amount of money so all you need to have is good amount of money in your pocket to invest in and secondly good amount of knowledge or maybe i should say that uh, i shouldn't say that okay that insider information a bit because we have got our resources in many of the companies and we know that okay this is a particular company that that's going to have uh, they have got some really good orders and the the price will definitely move up in the next forthcoming hours to come or maybe forthcoming days to come so many of my friends are doing it and they are doing it really well because they are already involved in this active strategy maybe via some brokerage houses or uh, some good friends okay so this was all about the active strategy okay why these person basically go ahead with the active strategy and stock market is something which wherein you can really uh, become any of them you can really become one king or you can become a beggar okay i have seen both of them okay i have seen people who have really turned their fortunes uh, by entering into the stock market okay and then at the same point of time i have seen people who have really uh, lost everything into the stock market like anything so you need to have a very controlled kind of lifestyle if in case you are really planning to invest your money in your stock market so don't go by that greed greed is something which is really bad for each one of us once that comes in and everybody uh, ends up losing everything so greed shouldn't come in try and explore the stock market as a very learning thing okay do learn from uh, the stock market how it works how good things happen in the, this particular market and make it a, a factor which is called as learning you need to learn from this market you don't need to earn you'll get some time don't worry about it you'll get n number of time to earn from this market first of all just learn i am at this particular scale i have already qualified as a, as a chartered accountant and a few further courses as well but still i am learning i am learning regularly okay i am not investing much of my money in your stock market but still i am learning like anything because earning will come later on learning comes fast so i uh, would recommend each one of you to go ahead and learn the tactics into the market okay so active strategy was all about that now comes in the passive strategy what do uh, passive strategy involves okay these are the persons who really aim at this particular strategy they do not uh, aim at outperforming the market they don't need to outperform the market they are the persons who really select large number of securities okay to reduce your risk okay they'll just simply go ahead in the market they'll buy some securities they'll hold it for some time they never ever go for speculation or short term trading they really want a very uh, like a good uh, life wherein they can sleep properly i've seen people who have invested a lot of money into the stock market and they are they are like having regular sleepless nights so there is no point of uh, having that particular um, that creating that burden in your mind so passive strategy uh, takers are the ones who basically want that good amount of sleep in their nights okay they really want to sleep really well so they just invest their money for a long term basis okay they don't uh, get trapped by that greed of speculating and getting the short term gains next they resort to portfolio revisions less frequently they don't change their portfolios they just hold okay and lastly they they basically follow a very simple thing which is again which i'm telling you a buy and hold strategy that is what they do so these are the two basic different strategies in your portfolio management active strategy and passive strategy i hope you guys are very much clear with each one of them so what's going to be your step your next step after completion of this video remember revision guys because thank you on behalf of the edupedia well thank you for watching this particular video stay connected guys that will help us in understanding your needs way better and keep interacting with me that really helps me in taking care of your concerns and it's wonderful to interact with you anytime guys so like share and subscribe to our channel i'll see you in my next video with a lot many things to share about this particular topic that fascinating topic which is called as portfolio management 
I'll see you. Take care. Sayonara. God bless you all. Bye.